Starting with a Composer 1.2.0, Downloadable Fonts API allows us to download Google Fonts asynchronously and use them in our application without having to include the actual font files in our project. Now, why is this a good thing? Well, there are a couple of reasons actually. The first one, the APK size. So downloading fonts uh, on demand means that the font files don't need to be bundled with the APK itself, which results in a faster downloads and installations for users. Next, uh, multiple applications on the same devices can uh, share the same font through a provider, and this uh, saves the user's network data, phone memory and a disk space. If uh, 10 running apps are using the same font family, then the user's uh, smartphone will not have 10 font files, but one instead. Also, developers can update the fonts on the server, and the users will uh, automatically get the updated fonts the next time they use the application, without requiring an app update. This allows for uh, easy updates and improvements. And finally, if a multiple applications use the same downloadable font, users can have a consistent typography experience across these applications, enhancing the overall usability and aesthetics. The only downside of this approach that I see is an internet connection. So an internet connection is initially required if the font doesn't already exist within the system itself. Also, at the time of recording this video, the one and only font provider which is available is Google Fonts. Ok, enough talking, let me show you how to implement that. So as always, we are going to follow the official Android developers documentation, and here they say that we need to add this dependency to use the Google Font Provider. So just add this dependency to your project, so simple as that. Uh, then the next uh, thing, as you can see, we need to define uh, the actual font provider. In this case, that's a Google font provider. So let's just uh, copy this uh, whole thing. I'm going to go back and actually open up uh, our uh, type Kotlin file uh, located in the theme uh, package. And here on the top, we can just declare uh, one new variable. So Google font uh, dot provider. Here we are specifying the provider authority, which is a Google Android GMS fonts and the provider package as well. Now this uh, third uh, certificates uh, parameter represents a list of a set of uh, hashes for the certificates to verify the identity of the provider. Now the actual array that we need to link to these certificates is uh, located in this um, GitHub repository. So I'm going to just open that up, and from here we can just uh, copy this uh, whole thing. So we need to create now a new uh, file in our uh, project, so font certs.xml. Let's just go back. So in our values directory, let's create here a new uh, value resource file, so uh, font certs. Let's just click OK. And here I'm going to paste this uh, whole thing. Ok, now after that you will see that uh, this uh, array will be uh, available in our uh, provider right there. After we have uh, specified uh, the actual provider and uh, dependency for our um, Google font, the next uh, thing we need to declare here is uh, the font name that we want to use. So let's also copy those uh, two uh, variables in our project. So down below. As you can see in this uh, case we are going to specify a custom font with the name of a lobster2. And uh, in the font family variable, we are calling the font uh, family uh, function, to which we are specifying that the same font family name, and also that the provider from which we want to grab that uh, custom font. And now, if you want to use this uh, custom font uh, in your application, you can just uh, easily open up your screen. As you can see here, we have a simple text, and as a font uh, family parameter, we can specify our uh, font family variable. Run the application. And now we are going to replace this default font family with a new one. There you go. So as simple as that. Now of course uh, you can also specify this uh, new custom font family on uh, all your uh, typography styles that you actually have in this uh, type Kotlin file. So you can just replace this uh, font family with a new one and then you don't uh, have to pass that uh, font family explicitly in your code like this. So it's uh, quite simple. Now, uh, the next uh, thing which I want to mention in this video is uh, how to add the fallback fonts. So, if something happens and you are not able to download uh, that uh, font that you actually want from this uh, Google provider, you can also specify a fallback font that uh, will be used uh, instead. And for that matter, as you can see down below, uh, below this uh, actual font that you are specifying from that provider, you can also specify that uh, same font by linking it from your resource uh, fonts directory. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try to actually uh, use uh, one uh, uh, font, 
one other font with the name of uh, uh, Bebas Nue. So now if I launch this application, you will see that this uh, font uh, will not be uh, included in our application. So now in this case, what you can do, you can also just uh, paste the actual uh, uh, font font file into your uh, font uh, directory of a resource directory, as you can see like that. And then from here, you can add one more uh, font. Uh, so just call here a font function and import this one that has the resource ID as a parameter. So let's specify here the resource ID. So r dot uh, uh, font dot uh, bebas new regular. So that's our actual file. And then now if I launch this application, then you will see that we will be able to see that font. Because here we have defined the fallback font, which will be used as a default font if that font is not available in this font family or in this font provider. Now the last thing which I want to show you here is how you can also debug and catch an exception to see why that font that you are fetching from your font provider is not applying in your application. So let's go down below to this debug your implementation section. And to help you verify that the font is being downloaded correctly, you can define a debug coroutine handler that will display uh, some more information about the reason uh, why your uh, font uh, may be uh, failing to uh, show in your application. So for that matter, I'm going to also just uh, copy this uh, whole thing uh, in our application, so in our main screen, right there. Let's define here a coroutine exception handler. And also we're going to log here an error. So let's just here write a main uh, a screen, for example. There we go. And also we need to wrap uh, our whole um, composable that uh, holds that uh, same font within this block. So let's just move this uh, box inside this composition local provider to which we are providing this um, local font family resolver. And now let's um, try uh, launching this application. Let's also observe the locket with this uh, same uh, tag and uh, we should be able to receive here uh, the actual error. Okay, so here it is, as you can see uh, there has been an issue and the actual issue is a legal state exception unable to load the, the font family with the name of uh, Bebas Nue. Now uh, if we scroll all the way down we can also see some more uh, information saying that uh, the font not found please check availability on a Google font provider all fonts list. So if we now open up this actual uh, list on our web browser we will see all those fonts that actually exist within the Google font provider. We can also copy the name of our font that we have written right here, so Webas Nue, this one. Let's click uh, Control F and let's paste that uh, same font. As you can see, this font uh, is actually available in this list. So I'm not sure the reason why we are not able to fetch that uh, font uh, in, our, um, in our application uh, from this font provider. But if we also check here one more uh, section in this documentation called uh, Cavets, we will see that the Google Fonts take us uh, several months to make new fonts available on Android. So there is a gap uh, in time between when a font is added on a fontsgoogle.com and when it's available through the Download Fonts API. So newly added fonts uh, might fail to load in your application uh, with an illegal state exception. And we have just uh, caught that exception in our code, which is why um, most probably the actual reason why we haven't been able to uh, use that font from this font provider is because that this exact font uh, is not yet available in Android, even though it's actually available on uh, official fonts.google.com. And there you go. So um, that's how you can easily implement um, a downloadable font in your application. Of course, uh, if your font uh, contains uh, multiple different um, styles of the same font family, you can declare here uh, multiple different uh, fonts in this list and you can specify a different uh, font weight for each one of them. So it's quite easy, right? Now, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment down below. And of course, uh, don't forget to like this video, but uh, only if you find it helpful. For this video, that will be all.